This video is a video of the exercise 2 of Basics of Using LiDAR, part of the Conservation Applications of LiDAR workshop series. It follows exercise 1 where we downloaded some data. So it's important that you have access to the PDF with these instructions and the PDF can be found at the the MinGeo website, Elevation Data, Elevation Subdirectory, LiDAR uh, page uh, under the workshop training material. And you'll want to make sure you have exercise 2 to follow along with these instructions. Now the instructions have uh, several sections in them and uh, the sections have uh, both some discussion of the basic spatial analyst, the raster calculator, some environment, and some raster processing is what we're going to be covering today. So the the first thing you'll want to do is to, and there'll be some data that you'll be acquiring a little bit later in the exercise, uh, we, we'll go through that at that time, but the first thing you want to do is start ArcMap and to navigate to the location where you stored the data from exercise one. Uh, so we're going to do add data and we're going to move to the the, the raw data that you had downloaded from exercise one and in raw data we're going to select the geodatabase and this is what the, the geodatabase, remember remember the tiles uh, within each county there's the 1 to 24 quad and that's divided up into 16 tiles and this is one of the 16 tiles of the quad that in, in the area we're studying and we're going to uh, examine that geodatabase, that file geodatabase and see that there's contour data and there's contours at different intervals and there's terrain data, and the, as well as there's buildings, and there's the DEM. We're going to add the DEM to our ARC map session. Then we're going to go into the symbology, left click on, on the DEM and right click on properties, and we're going to, in symbology tab, we're going to turn on the hill shade effect. So we're essentially going to ask for uh, the shadows to be shown. To help us understand the the landscape a little better. Now you want to remember that these shadows could be our uh, the z factor of one. If we were to put two in here or three or four, we'd be doubling or tripling the the shadow effect. Okay, we want just simple shadow effect. So we're showing the shadows of our area. Okay. Now if we go to uh, our catalog, we're able to look at that geo database and see that that geo database is is uh, is well explained. Uh, and the pieces, our contour data, our terrain data, uh, within the geodatabase. But if we were to open that same file within uh, Windows Explorer, where it, uh, and we were to open that geodatabase in Windows Explorer, you'd see that it's very confusing. There's all these pieces that make up this that geodatabase. So the best advice is, is to always use the ARC catalog for the copying or the the managing of your files and you'll want to notice that these are file geodatabases not personal geodatabases uh, and that's because of the size of the LiDAR data. Now the next thing we want to talk about is making sure that Spatial Analyst is going to work for you so you have to make you have to select customize extensions and make sure the Spatial Analyst checkbox is is checked so that Spatial Analyst is operational so that when we use our toolbox we would be able to see the spatial analyst tools available for us. And we're going to talk a little bit about the raster calculator and some of the hydrology and some other calculations as we go through these exercises. And, and the first tool that I want to talk a little bit about is the raster calculator and I've got some examples of the raster calculator in the instructions but I'll bring up the one in our GIS here that you'll see your layers are in this box, your operators are here, and your conditionals are here. So if we want to uh, multiply this raster by some number or, or divide it or add it, we'd be able to select the layers and then select the operations and whatever conditional and then direct it to our location. And we'll be doing that a little bit later in this exercise. Uh, the other thing to point out in with raster calculator and raster operations is setting the environment. The environment that you set has various different options that you can set. The processing extent is a common one. 
Raster analysis, cell size would be another common one. Raster storage would be another uh, common one that you'd be set. And you, so you can see that by clicking on the environment button, you're able to set the, uh, the operating environment for this raster calculator to process. Okay. All right, now our first step here is going to be to use another tool, and that is the hydrology tools of fill. All right. And we're going to take our, our basic DEM, all right, and we're going to fill in the sinks. And the sinks we're going to fill in uh, on our, uh, within, and we're going to have to direct it output to a particular location, and I'll put it in our basics subdirectory, and we'll just call this fill DEM. Okay, so that we've got the, the DEM, and we're going to fill it. Now, the Z limit is where we would control how much we would fill. If we were, for example, going to fill all the, the sinks in the landscape, we'll do it with blank. Uh, if we were to fill in a limit of uh, half a meter, or one meter, you know, we would be able to fill in to a certain level. For example, if we were trying to model uh, rainfall to a certain level on the landscape to say we're going to fill for up to two inches of precipitation and we have to see exactly what's how far we fill the sinks. Now in our case right now we're just going to be very simple and just fill in all the sinks and so we're going to say OK and we're going to fill those sinks and when that's completed you'll see that it displays on your screen the actual fill data and I'm displaying the, the fill, the filled DEM, all right? And so the sinks have been filled in, and it looks very similar to the other because there's subtle differences here uh, between the two. Uh, it's only the sinks I filled. So what we're going to do now is to do the raster calculator, and we're going to do raster calculator, and we're going to subtract from the, the DEM, we're going to subtract our filled DEM, and we're going to call this output, we're going to call this depressions. Because that's what it is. It's the depressions in the landscape. So we're subtracting, we're selecting one of our layers, there's taking this layer and subtracting that layer, this being our filled DEM. So when we, we click OK, when that's done, we can see that these are the depressions that in this particular 1 16th of the topo, uh, this particular LiDAR tile, you can see that there's some areas that it filled quite a bit and others it didn't. And, and we uh, determined that by subtracting our, uh, our filled DEM from our original. So we could see the areas that were actually filled and we could look into a little more detail to see exactly how much was filled if we were interested in more detail about that. Now when we're doing raster operations, uh, we often need to switch. You notice that the values in this DEM are uh, real numbers. And oftentimes we need to convert to in integer for many of our raster calculations. So we would have to change our digital elevation model or our filled DEM or our depressions to an integer. And when we're doing that, we want to preserve some of the detail. So the first thing that we often do is that we would do our raster calculator and we would take our DEM and we would divide that by uh, the uh, feet. Okay, so we would wind up with 0 0.3 uh, uh, 048. Okay. Now why are we doing this? And we'll, we're going to direct this to our uh, output here. We're going to call this DEM feet. So we're going to then save that. So we're taking our raster and dividing it by uh, 3.048, which is how many feet are in a meter, because our d demo is in meters. Uh, demo 1 is in meters. And we're going to create a feet raster. Okay. So we'll select OK. And when that's done, it's added to our uh, arc map session, added to our table of contents. And now what we're going to do is we're going to actually try and preserve some of our decimal values. So we're going to take the raster calculator, and we're going to take our feet, 
okay, uh, a raster layer, and we're going to divide that, and I'll select the divide, all right, and then I'm going to select the numbers here. I'm going to divide it by a thousand, so I'm going to shift the decimal point, and I'm going to be putting this into into a data set called DEM feet 10k 1k so I can remember that it's that I've divided it by a thousand after I've finished my integer calculations a little later we'll actually multiply it by a thousand to bring that data to re-expose that data okay so then we'll select OK when that is done it's added to our table of contents added to our arc map session now we're going to do toolbox raster calculator again and we're going to take our feet, uh, uh, 1K, but the, we're going to change it to an integer. So we'll select the integer operator, and we'll apply that integer operator to our DEM uh, that has been calculated, recalculated into feet and multiplied by 1,000. We're going to name that uh, DEM int or integer, and we're going to save that. Okay, so now we're, we're using the integer function to change it from a real number to an integer. Now that we've moved the decimal point from the, to uh, preserve our precision.